truly amazing to me how America has partied and lived the high life and how they think that that, that high life that they lived and the best of times in America were somehow or another given to them by each other and by their knowledge and their know-how, their innovation and their uh, knowing of how to uh, trade this money and do this and do that. Knowing how to build these big mansions. You know? Knowing how to live the high life was somehow or another obtained and was grasped in their hands by them. When in fact, the nation was founded on the principles of God. And being God, being long-suffering, God has tried to turn away and wink at our ignorance as a nation. But there comes a time when God has to begin to judge a nation that's become a cage of every unclean bird and a home of demons. Pornography and murder. Murderous rampage of babies and innocent. And guess what? You're about to get to see it. You're about to get to see the judgment of God upon a nation that used to serve God but has become wicked from one side of it to from sea to shining sea. Of course there's of course there's pockets of Christians. Of course there is. Of course there's pockets of Christians that will suffer and die. Of course there is. Absolutely. You know, there's a time and a season for everything. <clears throat> and i got to tell you something. As I've been reading the Word of God, and as I've been listening to people talk about Jesus being a pacifist and, you know, being a little weak, anemic person that walked around and Said it's okay. Don't 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 you stand against evil. You just go ahead and be a sheep to the slaughter. Well, let me read something to you real quick. I've talked to you a little bit about the Antichrist and his attributes. Let me talk to you a little bit about this uh, pacifist Jesus that some of you claim is a pacifist. In Revelation chapter nineteen. Saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, he that sat on him, was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Here it is. Anyway, what was that I just heard? In righteousness, he judges and makes war. Hmm. wonder what he's making war on. He's making war on ungodly heathens that would never come to him. He's making war in the physical and the spiritual. Well, that can't be so in time. Okay. Lord, Lord, Lord. Help me, Jesus of Nazareth. It says, verse 11, And I saw heaven open, behold, a white horse. He that sat on him was faithful and true, doth judge and make war by righteousness. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, had a name written that no man knew but himself. Watch this. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. His name is called the Word of of God. His name's not just called Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. 
His name is called the Word of God. Armies which were in heaven followed upon him with white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Out of his mouth goes a sharp sword. With it he should smite the nations and rule them with a rod of iron. Smite them, rule them with a rod of iron. Watch this. He treads the winepress, fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. That don't sound like the Jesus and God being preached today in these entertainment centers, does it? Oh, no, it don't. Because the falling away is in full force. The falling away of truth. He had on his vesture, on his thigh, written, King of kings and Lord of lords. That means he's king over every thing and everybody. He's king over all of it. Behold, the Bible says, all souls are mine, the good and the evil. My, my, my. Saw so an angel standing in the sun, cried with a loud voice, saying to, watch this, to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together to the supper, the great supper of the great God Almighty. What? Verse 18. That they may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. Saw the beast, kings of the earth, their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and his army. They're literally, literally going to try to make war on the resurrected Savior, Jesus Christ. I, I told my wife earlier, this is, if it wasn't so true, it would be almost laughable that these idiots would want to try to come against the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. But because they, because they have given themselves over to serve man rather than God, they're going to literally try this. But that's okay. Let's read on. And I saw the beast, and him was taken with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before them, which would deceive them that had received the mark of the beast. And them that worshipped this beast in his image. These both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. Oh, I thought hell wasn't real. They preaching hell ain't real today. Oh my gosh, okay, lake of fire. And they cast in there, but it ain't real. That's okay. Keep preaching them lies. Go ahead, go ahead. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him who sat on the horse, which is Jesus. Which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all fowls were filled with their flesh. Literally, the buzzards and vultures eat them. Boy, that's a great burial for those that worship Satan and the Antichrist, ain't it? Well, I, I, can't, I can't take this God if he's like this. Whoever serves God will not be partakers of that. But who serves the Antichrist, and the world will be. So that pacifist Jesus that you talk about, I just read about, he's not so pacifist, is he? Well, what about, what about it in time? What do I do? I'll tell you what you do if you want to know. First thing you do is, is, is you acknowledge there's a God in heaven and he's got books and he's writing down everything, the Bible says. Second thing you do is realize that God sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to be the perpetuation for our sins that died on the cross without the shedding of blood. There's no forgiveness of sins, so God sent his son to shed his blood so that you could be forgiven of your sins. And if you'll just simply pray a prayer to God and, and, and ask Jesus Christ to, to, to come into your heart and cleanse you and be your Savior and, and make a profession of faith, an affirmation of faith, because if you confess him before men, he'll confess you before the Father. Ask him to save you. Ask him to fill you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Ask him to give you the power to say no, say, say no to evil and yes to right. And ask him to help you walk on the straight and narrow path that leads to life. And, and, and ask him to show you the truth of his word. And pray that you be counted worthy to escape these things and stand before the Son of Man. It's up to you. Because this video is through. God bless you.